Fantastic. Hello. Uh, welcome to Echo episode 72 um, with myself, Dan Finneran, and uh, Dylan, if you'd like to introduce him. Yeah, I'm Dylan Amarink. Excellent. Um, yeah, so I, I guess kind of a, a quick kind of introduction. So um, I'm part of the community team. This is my first ever uh, Echo live stream, uh, stepping in some, some pretty big shoes. Um, Pretty excited. Uh, we're going to be talking, well, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the ingress control functionality that was added in uh, Selenium 1.12. Um, Dylan, if you kind of want to talk a little bit about what you do and what you're going to be talking about today. Yeah, so I'm a software engineer at ISO Verdant, uh, but um, I'm going to present basically my first big feature that's uh, uh, implemented in Selenium, which is the um, load balancer IP address management and uh, announcement of service IPs via BGP. So I'm really excited to show you what I've been up to for, for the last couple of months. Fantastic. Well, congratulations on getting all of that added in. Um, I know that's going to be, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> that's going to be like fantastic functionality that, you know, kind of people, um, you know, definitely going to be using quite a lot. Um, Cool. Uh, so as I mentioned, we've got two demos that we're going to be, or three demos, I suppose, uh, that we're kind of going to be uh, covering today. Um, some kind of quick additional kind of headlines that we kind of want to bring to people's attention. Um, as of, I believe, the beginning of this week, uh, there is now a fantastic new partnership in place between uh, iSurveillant, um, Cilium Enterprise, and Azure customers. So if you head to the azure.microsoft.com uh, blog, uh, or isavalent.com, um, you'll be able to find a lot more information uh, about how you can now get all of those Cilium features whilst you know kind of deploying your your workloads uh, on the Azure cloud. So um, that's fantastic. That's a fantastic new set of uh, go-to-market and uh, strategies that we we now have. So um, excellent. I hope people can uh, you know kind of use that and um, get all of those Cilium advantages. So. Um, I guess I will kick things off. Um, today, as I mentioned, I'm going to be talking about um, the ingress controller functionality that is part of Cilium 1.12. Um, I'm going to be doing a, a demo of deploying all of that from effectively from start to finish. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy a kind cluster. Um, we'll deploy Cilium on there. We'll deploy QVIP on there for quick load balance functionality. Uh, and then we'll expose some workloads. So uh, let me... Start Sounds awesome. By, yeah, thank you. Let me start this by uh, sharing my terminal and we will kick things off. Cool. Right. Uh, I may need to make this a little bit bigger. Excellent. Right. So uh, I'm just going to pop onto my kind server here. Uh, just for, and I'll put this into the conversation here, all of the notes for everything that I will be deploying today uh, on this fork of the Grafana observability demo. Um, and what we'll also be seeing uh, exposed by the ingress controller um, is some of the new functionality and some of the strategies that we now have with the uh, work that we're doing with Grafana uh, to expose a lot more metrics and observability in people's workloads. So uh, first thing we're going to do is I will quickly set up our kind cluster. So uh, if I pop into here, we will kick this off. So um, just deploying a, a simple kind cluster. Um, that should all come up pretty quickly. Uh, it's going to be a, a quite a bit of uh, command line copy and pasting going on just to kind of set things up. Oh, but the people love that. Well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm just going to quickly split this. Um, and I'll split it again, just so that we can watch uh, what's actually happening. That's why. So this uh, will basically allow people to see everything that's, I keep forgetting I'm not on the kind box here. So we can basically see what's uh, actually coming up. So we've got kind deployed. We're basically sat watching uh, servers, services, and pods that will be coming up. Um, 
We're just going to use Helm to quickly deploy uh, some of the Prometheus CRDs uh, that are required so that um, obviously our Kubernetes cluster understands some of the things that we'll be deploying uh, and quickly create a namespace for everything to live in. And then what we're going to quickly do here is we're going to quickly deploy uh, kubevip. Um, so there's four lines here, but effectively, we're going to be dropping in the RBAC that it needs. Uh, we're specifying uh, just a network range that um, Kind is aware of. Um, we've uh, dropped the cloud controller so that it will apply uh, IP addresses to uh, services of type load balance, and then kubevip will expose those to the outside world. So that is up and running. And now what we're going to do is we're going to deploy Cilium. Uh, and one thing to be aware of here is this line here, uh, the line at the bottom, which is set uh, ingress controller dot enabled equals true. Uh, and you will already see in the list of services, we now have a Cilium ingress load balancer, uh, which is set to pending. Um, and if you've ever deployed a, a Kubernetes cluster from scratch, um, you will know that a lot of service, a lot of pods won't actually come up until a CNI is actually in place. A lot of things will be sat, uh, sat pending. So Core DNS won't start. Uh, anything that actually uh, isn't using host network will will effectively be sat there waiting for a CNI to actually uh, to actually start up. So, uh, Cilium goes through all of those steps. Uh, it will mark the nodes as ready. Uh, it will start to be able to give IP addresses to to those pods. Uh, and once that happens, uh, it means kubevip can actually come up and actually apply IP addresses to those to those load balancers as well. So. Uh, this should only take a couple more seconds. There we go. Um, we should see these services start to populate in a second. Come on, live demos. There we go. Um, so we've now applied uh, an IP address in the kind range to uh, our Cilium Ingress load balancer. So now we're going to deploy some of the observability parts to this. So we're going to drop the uh, collector um, and the open telemetry operator. And we will drop tempo in here uh, for doing um, tracing into what's actually going to be you know, going to be doing those layer seven traces and, and big giving us all that observability into what's actually happening. So we should start to see more pods appearing. Um, so we've got the operator installed. We're dropping tempo to allow us to do uh, all of that tracing. Once we've finally finished applying this bit, we will actually then drop Prometheus and Grafana onto, onto the cluster. And then we'll be able to kind of look under the covers in terms of seeing what's actually happening. So this should take a couple more seconds. And then, as I mentioned, the final step in this will be uh, to drop Prometheus on here. So final step is... We're just using Helm uh, to drop Prometheus on here. So, so what we've done, just to kind of quickly reiterate, we've quickly set up a Kubernetes cluster. Um, we've dropped kubevip on here for just simple load balancing and, and adding an IP address to load balancer services. Um, and then we've installed Cilium on there with the ingress controller enabled. So that will now uh, allow us the capability of having ingress controllers. Um, and we're now dropped uh, open telemetry tempo and Prometheus and Grafana. I suppose one kind of quick thing to kind of cover really is what, what we're actually talking about when we're talking about load balancers and we're talking about ingress controllers. Um, as I mentioned actually kind of a, a, you know, a, a earlier on, if you deploy a Kubernetes cluster for the first time, you'll notice that pods won't actually work without a CNI. Um, especially if you're doing Kubernetes yourself, a lot of people are sometimes caught unaware of the fact that uh, Kubernetes isn't a complete isn't a complete platform. It isn't a complete solution. Um, there's no runtime out of the box. Typically, there's no networking out of the box, and there's no storage out of the box. So you know, there's there's a number of components that you actually need uh, to build the complete platform, as it were. Um, so uh, you know, kind of Cilium takes care of giving. Well, Cilium actually does a lot more things, but you know, kind of simply put, uh, Cilium as a CNI takes care of giving pods that we run inside our Kubernetes cluster, IP addresses, takes care of traffic between pods, um, takes care of traffic between services. Um, for uh, clusters that are virtualized or on bare metal or edge and things like that, um, other things that are missing are things like load balancers. So you need things like uh, MetalLB or kubevip to do 
that sort of layer two, layer three uh, load balancing. And then finally, um, uh, ingress controllers. So uh, load balancers are pretty simplistic. They're effectively, uh, well, not they're not really even load balancers under most situations. If you look at on-premise, what, what these load balancers are actually doing is they're largely just giving a, a VIP, a uh, highly available virtual IP address. You can hit that IP address and traffic then will hit the services underneath it. Um, load balancing does happen inside the Kubernetes cluster, but not, not really in front of it. Um, but that's just simple you know, kind of TCP connectivity. So if I'm hitting a web server, I'm either hitting 443 or port 80 and then just going directly to one of the pods underneath it. Uh, ingress controllers are much more exciting. They do a lot more, uh, they have a lot more kind of clever logic. So um, as we can see at the moment, you know, we have a lot of services on here. Uh, these are cluster IP, so these are internal uh, addresses that I can hit to hit uh, traffic that sits underneath these cluster IP addresses. And then we have uh, a load balancer IP, which is exposed to the outside world. So this is largely to get traffic into your cluster. Ingress controllers allow us the capability of doing, uh, of having the capability of actually looking at what the traffic looks like that's coming in. So for instance, um, we've now have our applications up and running. What we will do is we'll apply some ingress configuration. So I'll just quickly do this and then we'll look at what this actually means. command there. So we've applied our uh, ingress manifest. Um, and if we actually have a look now at uh, resources of type ingress. So if we look here, we have one uh, that's class Cilium, which is the one that we're obviously going to be focusing on. If I actually open that up, well, if we actually look at that uh, as YAML, It's so much harder to use the terminal when other people are watching. It should have a name for that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, so we can ignore this bit. But here is the actual spec. This is the bit that's actually interesting. So an ingress controller uh, actually has the capability of looking at what how the traffic is actually coming in. Um, for this particular example, it has a number of rules which determine what happens when traffic hits um, our ingress controller. So for instance, the rules that we've applied here, um, this is an internal, so I run my own DNS like a normal person, I guess. Um, <laughs> this is this is internal DNS. So if I hit grafana.mysurname.me inside this house, um, that will go to that load balancer IP address. And what will actually happen there is that the rules inside our ingress controller here will determine that all traffic that comes in to that host name will be redirected to this backend. And that, that is the service that it will actually be hitting uh, on this particular port and the URI um, that you may be wanting to hit on there. So there are a lot more kind of advanced use cases that you may typically see. Uh, some you know, kind of big companies will have for instance, um, accounts or finance or you know, kind of various parts of perhaps their website. Um, and you hit the ingress controller on a particular path or on a particular URL. These rules will then dictate whereabouts inside the stack your traffic will actually be sent to, will actually be routed to. Um, and that is you know, kind of effectively how you know, kind of ingress controllers work. They can work on things like host name lookups. They can look up on paths. They can do bits of you know kind of regex based upon what it is that you're you're actually hitting, all to determine the path that you're actually taking. So instead of it being almost being kind of a point-to-point -point IP address to destination IP address, um, we can have a lot more kind of logic baked in here, which effectively you know kind of gives us a lot more functionality uh, under the covers. So uh, as you can see, I've added in my own rule here, um, which points uh, me hitting grafana.finnerin.me to this particular service. So I will stop sharing this screen and I will quickly pop us to a quick window where we can, oh, it's already opened it as I move the screen, that's annoying. So stop sharing this and quickly add in a quick other 
demo just so we can see what this looks like. Putting your live streaming skills to the test. Yeah, absolutely. As I say, it's been my first time actually driving StreamYard. I don't know how well I'm doing, but uh, nothing seems to have broken too bad so far. So um, yeah, as I open, this is actually kind of already did the, the look at, but we can see here, uh, if I go to grafana.finneran.me, what's actually happening is I'm going to uh, that load balancer IP address, which is uh, inside the kind cluster. Um, I'm being, those rules are being looked up and I'm being redirected to the service Grafana. Uh, and, you know, kind of, find, I, I believe we're going to do another echo session in the future, which is going to talk uh, in a bit more depth in terms of, you know, kind of this observability demo. Um, but we'll quickly log into this just so that we can kind of see what this looks like. Thank you. Uh, right, cool. So we are into our dashboard. Um, this particular example already adds in uh, a set of observability in here. So um, this observability, which has been you know, kind of uh, a joint kind of uh, engineering effort between Grafana and, and iSurveillant, and as part of the Hubble project, uh, utilizes uh, some eBPF and, and some Envoy to basically provide us uh, a lot of kind of observability in terms of what's actually happening under the covers. So this is um, effectively a, a bunch of metrics. Um, well, it's a lot of observability all around layer seven and HTTP. Um, so effectively, as I'm actually hitting this website, um, the Grafana uh, website here, that's all uh, HTTP stuff that's actually happening. Um, and you know, kind of a bunch of eBPF rules which have been injected are capturing all of that observing what's actually transpiring and actually happening, and then providing that back as uh, observability information that Prometheus can grab and Grafana can then show to the show to what's, uh, what's actually happening. So we can see here, um, you know, uh, destination at the moment, all I'm doing is hitting the, the, the Grafana uh, service. One of the good things here though, is um, all of this is, is Kubernetes aware. So, uh, if you look at kind of traditional monitoring and things like that, a lot of it is um, capturing packets, capturing bits of information. It's largely down to you as the kind of uh, end user to try and, you know, kind of tabulate this bit of information with this bit of information and what it all means. You know, what is the fantastic about this is that it is Kubernetes aware. So it can, you know, be under the covers. It can be knowledgeable about what this traffic actually looks like. Uh, even capturing all that low-level information, it can you know, link it back to resources and objects inside the Kubernetes cluster. So you don't have to do that yourself. It's it's kind of all there in one place. So uh, as I mentioned, we're going to do an, uh, a, a much more in-depth demo, uh, especially around all of the new Grafana work that, that has been happening recently. Um, the ingress controller is so simple, and you know, it's effectively one additional line that needs adding for when you do uh, the, the Cilium install. Um, yeah, so uh, there's a number of different ways that you can expose it to the outside world. So you don't necessarily need a load balancer. You can use node ports as well. Um, so yeah, um, with that, that's kind of the quick end of the, the Ingress controller demo that, that I wanted to talk about today. Uh, if there are any questions, then please add them into the comments and we will uh, do what we can to help you. Cool. And I will stop sharing there. All right. Let's give people a little time to ask their questions before we move on. But I think we'll, we're all right. I think we're okay. Okay. So um, let's see. So we'll move on to to the, the uh, load balancer IP address management or LBI PEM for short. Um, and I'm going to share my screen. All right. All right. So um, what I have here is um, I have a, a demo setup, um, which we uh, often use uh, internally for development of, of BGP related features. Um, so it's very similar to the to the setup you uh, you had yourself. So it's a kind cluster, but in addition, um, in addition we we have some uh, uh, tooling uh, uh, and setup with Container Lab that allows us to um, to have BGP connections to 
uh, BGP connections to to to, to an external um, router, a, a fake router. Uh, and it, in addition, it does a lot of setup and building for me uh, in my little make file, which takes a bit, um, which gives me time to explain what what the the, the goal of this new feature is. So. Um, for a while, so uh, for a while now, we have had uh, Metal LB support um, in Cydium, uh, which uh, allows us to um, to make announcements via BGP, uh, which is uh, important if you uh, if you want to use Kubernetes within a private uh, private cloud um, or or your own uh, uh, basically your own office, let's say, uh, and and integrate it with the rest of your enterprise network. Um, so, uh, and, and that has worked for us so far, um, but uh, it has a, a number of limitations. Um, uh, first of all, it, uh, it is limited to IPv4 um, and we are moving on to more, we want to have more control over our BGP implementation. Uh, so we're moving away from, from the old Metal LB uh, stuff and into our own uh, uh, more controlled implementation, which is called the BGP control plane. Um, and one of the critical features that was missing from this BGP control plane was the ability to announce uh, load balancer IPs. So uh, now my uh, uh, and that's basically what we are with what we are adding now uh, now with um, both the LB IPAM and the actual announcement parts. So I have my cluster up and running. Uh, it's a it's a quite small cluster with, uh, uh, and it has Cilium uh, enabled. Um, yep. So um, we've got everything working. Um, so what's my scenario? Um, I'm going to um, I'm going to first of all add some namespaces. Um, Nick, add some namespaces so we can play with that uh, in a couple of minutes. Um, so we have a namespace, and in this case, I've uh, 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 I imagine my two namespaces to be two two different tenants. So uh, this is from the perspective of a of a cluster owner operator, and and then I have uh, some additional users that that might only have access to one one of my uh, one of the namespaces that I've given them. Um, so well, one of these users adds a service, and we'll call this the blue service for now. Uh, and my service is very simple. Um, I, I haven't attached any backends for now um, because we are just uh, showing the, the load balancer part of it. So I've created a load balancer. I've, I've specified what port I want. Uh, and in this case, it's, it's tenant's ace service. Um, when I go look in, uh, uh, in my services, we see that's added now. Um, but you'll notice that the external IP is, is set to pending. Um, why is that? That's because this uh, this is a local cluster. Um, by default, like like you mentioned, then uh, uh, Kubernetes is missing a lot of parts, uh, and even uh, uh, and by default, even with Cilium, um, there's no actual uh, external load balancing. So in in a cloud environment like AWS or GCP. Um, uh, you would have uh, load balancers from your cloud provider that are actually providing you some load balancing capability externally. Um, but if you deploy in your own in your own uh, uh, private cloud, then you then you don't have this, um, which is a bit of a uh, so you'll you'll miss out on some parts. Now there is a trick, and we'll, we're we're going to talk about that in a, in a bit. Uh, but the first thing we have to solve is we need to get an IP address. Um, before we can announce an IP, we need to know what it's what it's going to be. Um, so to do this, we've introduced the LB icon feature. Um, so when I um, when I create a when I create a pool, um, by the way, my pool looks something like this. So we have now we now have a new uh, custom resource called the Cinema Load Balancer IP pool. Um, called this blue pool, um, and uh, I in this case I added a, a cider for for my blue blue pool, uh, and I'm not adding any selectors at all. So it's just here's my pool. Uh, anyone anyone can use this. And if I now go back, uh, we see that the uh, we've automatically uh, now that we have pools, uh, the Cilium uh, the the LB IPAM feature 
um, notices that at least one pool exists, so it's, it enables itself, it go, comes out of dormancy, and it will uh, assign external IP address there, um, which is basically all, all you need in, in, in a basic sense. So if you, if you say, uh, uh, have one big IP range that you can use that is like uh, yours to use for services, then, then you're done at this point. Um, but of course, we added a lot of additional stuff to make this uh, uh, to make this more interesting. Um, one of these things that we uh, that we did is that we um, can have expressions. So, uh, or we have a selector. So you can, uh, for example, say, okay, I want I have my pool now, um, but I only want to uh, use this pool for for specific um, services or specific namespace, whatever. Uh, and in this case, uh, I made a match expression. So we also have match labels, which we'll get to a bit later. Uh, but the max, ma match expression is a more powerful way to do it. So I can make a list of colors in this case, um, uh, which, which matches labels um, for which this would be allowed. So if I update my, if I update my pool, um, nothing changes because um, our blue service has the label, uh, our service has the label um, blue. But if I were to, to add a second surface now, um, if I were to add a second surface now, uh, which is uh, red, for example, uh, then it's going to ask me to actually properly do this. Uh, so when I when I add this red surface, it's adding, uh, but it doesn't receive an IP address. So this is still pending um, because it's uh, uh, because it's not included. Our pool doesn't allow. Uh, allowed the red service, and we don't have any other pools, so uh, it's out of luck. Um, now, one way to debug this, um, which is uh, uh, quite important sometimes, is if we go uh, look at the conditions, uh, then we uh, uh, then we now say, okay, there there is no IP pool, there are no IP pools, and that's why um, we are, we're not able to satisfy any requests made. So. Uh, and if there are other reasons, uh, which we'll get to later, why why this fails, then then it will also be noted in the conditions of the uh, of the service. Um, one other neat thing now that we're looking at this is we can actually look at the pool itself. Um, pardon, at the IP pool. So if we go look at the uh, the pools overview, we we can see we have our blue pool now, which is not disabled and it's not having a conflict with any other pools, and we still have a lot of IPs available to, to work with. Um, now, it mentions conflicts here. Um, what's that about? So um, the, the, the reason we might have a conflict, for example, would be um, because we are adding a second pool. So let me, let me, add, our, let me add our red pool for now. Um, and if this red pool were to have, for example, the same the same cider uh, or an overlapping cider as our other blue pool, uh, then then we have an issue because then then we would would be dupl uh, announcing duplicate stuff. So uh, one thing to watch out for if you're going to edit pools is that if you have overlapping overlapping ciders, um, that your your pool doesn't have a conflict. Um, so in this case, it does, uh, which means that this red pool still won't work. So I, I added the red pool. This red pool now gives out, should give out an IP to my red, um, to my red surface, but it can't because uh, uh, there are issues uh, which have to be resolved first. Um, so let's do that, um, which I simply can do by removing the, the conflicting range and updating my pools. Uh, and now we'll see that as soon as the conflict is resolved, then my uh, then we can assign an IP, and it's a, a different IP from this range because it's the uh, because it's a red pool. Um, so um, what next? So um, that's cool, and also we we now have an external. We we now get a random external IP. Uh, but there are situations in which you might want a very specific uh, specific IP, um, uh, which is which we can do. So um, Kubernetes for a while now has had this this load balancer IP field, uh, which you can use to request one single IP. Uh, so I'm updating my blue surface in this case, um, blue updating it, um, and now. 
uh, we requested this very specific IP and we and and we got it because it was available. Um, so if you if you for example have to to always have a stable IP address, then then that's one way to go. Uh, now this is officially deprecated. Um, uh, we it's it's not recommended to do this anymore, but it's good to know that it's, that the option is still there. And the official way uh, to do it is to use the a load balancer specific or um, uh, annotation. So we we also introduced the, the uh, Iocilium LB IPAM IPs, um, which has uh, also has the added benefit that you can can um, request multiple multiple IPs. Um, so let's update it and what we are. Um, and I forgot to uncomment my my spec specification again. So here we go. Um, so it's updated, but in this case, I request an IP that doesn't exist. We don't have pools for it, um, which is uh, a security feature. So um, your user, since the your user is in control over over services, we don't want them to to um, uh, get control or, or get an IP address which they're not supposed to have. So it's always we there's always control from from the cluster owner uh, on the the, the cluster wide IP pools. Um, um, so we, uh, so that's a that's a part uh, that's that's a piece of control. Uh, and if we uh, if we go look at the um, at the conditions here, then we'll uh, then then the conditions will also explain that this is the case. So that's um, there's no there's no pool with a cider for for this IP address. Uh, so if you're missing IPs, then uh, uh, then then all should be explained here. Um, now, if I then uh, if I if I actually update update a pool, so I I would have to update my blue pool because it's uh, uh, it's the blue service that I that I added. Um, so if I go and update my blue pool, uh, then we should see that is the that this 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 additional IP gets gets allocated. Uh, have to quickly see what range it is again. Yeah, it's just uh, that one. So updated the pools. Uh, sir, but I, I asked very nicely. <laughs> uh, I might have to move on a bit. Uh, because I don't know what's going wrong, and we don't have very much time to de to debug the issue at this moment. Um, so, and and the last the last thing uh, I guess I wanted to to show you is um, is working is is having multiple uh, load balancers at once. So um, there's also the the load balancer class. Uh, in this case, uh, um, I um, I can request that my again my blue um, my blue service uh, my blue service uh, uses the the BGP control plane uh, as a load balancer, uh, and because our BGP control plane now uses LB IPAM, we'll we'll allocate with that. Um, actually, I'm going to slightly change this to to. Uh, demonstrate what happens if you uh, if you have some other thing in place. Um, so if we have another another class in place, and I, I were to update my um, my blue uh, service, yeah. Live demo is always fun, isn't it? Oh, right. Um, so actually, uh, one funny detail here is that um, that we're that you're not not allowed to change this value on an existing service. So we have to, in this case, delete a service and re-add it. So we re-added the service, um, and now this service gets uh, 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 is left alone. So we um, and we we will not even set. Uh, conditions on it because um, the the user has requested that we use a different load balancer. So this this feature on Kubernetes one uh, for twenty four will allow you to to uh, cooperate. So have multiple load balancer implementations within within one cluster, and then you can select which one you want to use um, with the uh, with the classes. 
um, uh, did that cover everything? Um, well, actually, we'll sh we should also show you then that that it does work if we if we add the correct one. Um, so I'll delete and re-add my service again. And if we have the correct one, we we again apply apply an AP uh, address, uh, and it's and that works. Um, lastly, um, uh, a bit on the on the pool side. Um, one feature that I think is really interesting is the ability to, so uh, what we've been doing so far is we've been using the um, um, either no selector um, or, or the match uh, or, or selectors on labels, um, but we also define some special labels, so the, the namespace, the name and namespace labels. Um, and these allow you to um, select complete namespaces. So instead of having labels, which a user can freely uh, use or not, um, this feature allows, allows us to, if we indeed have a tenant that's isolated to a namespace, to only to have a pool specifically for that, for that tenant. Um, so what I'll do is I'll change this to five to, to show you that for tenant A, this updates. Um, so um, we'll apply my pool. So we've we've updated the pool. Um, the the IP the IP changes now. So we uh, our new pool is in charge in charge of doing things, uh, and we're still in namespace tenant A. But if I were to to add a um, so if I delete my red service, um, if I delete my red service. Uh, and I, I re-add it in, in a different namespace. Um, where did you go? Here we are. So if I create a name, uh, the red service again, but in this case, I'll add it in this, in this B tenant namespace. Um, so nothing changed about the, uh, uh, pardon. So yeah, there we go. The red service is created. So the red service, um, wait. Oh, I love demos. And you guys, um, I'm going to remove the red one for now. So we only have this blue pool, which only works for the for for ten uh, for the um, tenant A. Um, now, if we go to services, then we see that the tenant B, uh, um, even though there are no other. There are no other selectors that tenant B doesn't get that doesn't get an IP address. So it really allows you to, in this case, say, okay, I allocated this range of IPs for this tenant, uh, and and another tenant is is unable to get IPs from that range and unable to to steal it due to, for for security concerns. So that's all cool and and dandy. So we we talked a lot about uh, about these IPs, um, uh, but then what? So. The next step of the, the 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 next and last step of the equation is that we um, we now added uh, so to to the our existing BGP peering policy, which describes um, uh, how B, what BGP does and how it connects. Um, we added the the service selector um, the service selector uh, um, field, which basically works the same. Uh, the only as 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 our pools. The only difference is if you don't specify it. So actually, I'll go ahead and first create one without without uh, the field, just like you would have in an existing cluster that already has the uh, appearing policy uh, there. Um, then we don't announce any services to, to preserve the default behavior. Um, so I'm going to add this policy, uh, and it creates. A, uh, and what this does is it it tells uh, it tells us to to create a virtual router on our uh, on our node um, with this local um, uh, autonomous system number uh, to and we're in this case we're going to export the pod ciders and we're going to connect to to a neighbor uh, and this neighbor uh, it was created when we when we constructed uh, the cluster uh, and it's just uh, uh, an fr an frr instance so so just another software bgp speaker um now if we uh if i say show routes then it shows me the the, the routing table and all of the routes that were learned uh, and we can see here that from um uh, zero two which is our our um kubernetes nodes um over that over bgp we learned the the 10 the 10 uh, 24 which is our 
pot cider um, because of our pot cider rule. Um, and then, uh, but we don't have any, any, but we don't have our service, so the service IP that um, that was assigned. Uh, let me increase this actually. So we we should uh, we want we want this fifty uh, um, IP to show. So in this case, I'll I'll add my uh, my service selector. I'm going to select blue um, because we we want to select our blue service again. Um, now, if I update this policy, um, then we should see that now um, this load balancer IP is also announced over over BHP and is available to us. Um, and that's 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 basically the whole result of this. So we have a lot of policy, we have a lot of options there, and the end result. Uh, but but um, if we if we were to have just created one simple um, pool. Uh, and, and added this policy, then, then we are then we are there with the result. Um, now again, we uh, we have flexibility here, so you could have different virtual routers that that announce different services and have um, have separation uh, uh, there. So if you deploy two virtual routers, let's say on two different nodes, um, and and you have the, and they end both announce routes, then traffic would be um, would have a unique. Uh, ingress uh, path, which is desirable for for some people, especially if you isolate between different users. Uh, and again, here we have this the, the IO Kubernetes service namespace um, uh, expression, which if I update it with that, we shouldn't see any change in this at this moment because uh, the tenant the tenant A is where we have our where we have our IP. So if I update it, everything stays the same. But if I were to change this again to some different namespace, then um, then our uh, uh, our announcement should go away, and it does. Um, so we you have a lot of flexibility here with the with the the, the selectors and and stuff to to be able to to really uh, engineer how you how you want data to to enter your cluster. Um, uh, and which IPs are used by which namespaces, services, etc. Um, yeah, so that's that, that's it. Um, is that very, very awesome? All right. Um, then I, I guess I'll stop sharing. We'll, we'll see. Actually, are there, before, are... You, before you do, there's there's a couple of questions I think in the chat. I also have a couple of questions as well. Um, right. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so I'll go to Raymond's questions first. Uh, well, uh, is it possible that each color slash tenant has its own BGP peering configuration with specific BGP peers? Yeah, yeah, it is. So, um, like I so so yeah. for example, here we here we have the the blue the blue label. Um, uh, as of right now, um, uh, so so for example, you get it uh, if you want it on the same node. Um, you could add, for example, uh, another virtual router pair, um, which the, the the main limitation here is that it should um, that it should have a different uh, local ASN, uh, which could, for example, have two ASNs um, for for different um, um, so so have different ASNs for different mm -hmm. uh, internal companies or or whatever different structure, and then uh, also specify different uh, neighbors, and then the uh, our red, um, our red service would only be announced to the second, to the second peer. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, so I, so I've just got a couple of questions as well. I suppose so. The export pod cider does this effectively make all pods accessible through routing through the, the top of rack switch? Yeah, uh, it does. Uh, I should mention that this is an existing feature, so it's already. So what I've shown you so far is all new in one thirteen. Uh, and uh, the pot cider um, is already in one twelve and one eleven, okay. I believe. So um, each so pods are directly accessible through through the routing. Uh, yeah, so they they are announced, um, and okay. the main uh, I believe the main use case for for doing so would be if you want to connect two clusters. So if you uh, so so not using cluster mesh, but having for example um, two Kubernetes clusters. Talk to each other, um, uh, or or if you if your nodes, for example, are, uh, uh, um, are have a bit of distance between them, and you need BGP, and you need BGP to to actually um, to actually be a route uh, uh, pod traffic between between the nodes. Yeah, 
between two different okay. locations within within a cluster. Very cool. Um, my the other question, I suppose, was so. Uh, as I mentioned, this is my third week, so I'm still in massive learning mode at the moment. So I wasn't actually where Metal LB is is kind of shipped at the moment, I guess, as part of a holistic solution for doing for doing things. Is that going to be kind of going away now with like the that, functionality? That is our long term plan. So um, I, I don't know if it's if it's def definitive, but we are uh, we want to deprecate Metal LB uh, basically as soon as possible. Um, and and really move into into this solution. So uh, with metal, so so with metal LB, for example, we um, with the BGP control plane, we have our own uh, CRD, and and with the metal LB, you have to provide configuration um, when you install Cilium, when you uh, when you do stuff. So this is all around a way way better, um, interesting, or, or a way better way of do, of doing things. Yeah, I mean, it certainly simplifies the stack. You know, kind of keeping it as simple as possible and removing as many layers is uh, is always a good thing. I suppose the other, for people that are using Metal LB, will things continue to? I, I presume you can still. Yeah, decide. so we're not removing anything just yet. Um, we're we're probably going to do that uh, in one or two releases. Um, so we want to give people uh, plenty of time to migrate from from Metal LB to to this solution. Um, but the interesting part here is that um, so so the the first and second part of this demo so the IP address management and actually announcing over the, so the announcements over BGP are um, separate. So yeah. um, you will be, for example, you you can um, start uh, uh, announcing the same IPs that that Metal LB also um, is announcing and actually is assigning. Um, so the migration path should be relatively should be relatively easy yep. to to go from uh, uh, if so if you already have services with um, with with, lo with with external IPs um, then this should go seamless and then the only thing is that you you have to at some point create the the IP uh, the the uh, the LBI pen pools. Mm -hmm. um that match the same configuration as metal lb and then after that you can disable metal lb and and all should still work cool that's the yeah. that's the goal <laughs> cool uh, there's a quick question that's popped in as well um would it be possible to announce or slash export uh the cluster ip cider as well so as of the the the, the current release um uh, that's not possible um because the so the um, <laughs> reason behind it is that, that cluster IPs are usually not supposed to be exported. And it's really an internal internal cluster. Uh, it does break the model somewhat, doesn't it? <laughs> it's, so so the officially, Kubernetes uh, will say uh, cluster IPs are not to be exported. Use low balancer IPs. But yes, uh, we, we, we do have the feature request. Uh, uh, we, we have received it. Uh, and and uh, I suspect it will be added uh, at a later date. Um, but we didn't add it just yet because it's not official and there are some yeah. some implications like how do you, for example, we showed the load balancer class. Um, how should we handle services? Uh, like does that also apply to cl cl cluster IPs or not? There are, there are some questions around implementation. Um, yeah. But but I expect it will 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 be added at some future future time, uh, as well as the external IPs. So so also normal cluster IPs can also um, uh, describe external IPs, which uh, uh, are normally just only added. Um, so they, they traffic for it will be accepted, but nothing else. Uh, and that's also a candidate to to in future add to to the announcement. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose you know, kind of bundled amongst all those cluster IPs is kind of the API server address as well. So you know, you don't want you don't want that accessible everywhere and things like that. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, and the cluster IPs are, are are often like these internal internal routes, and you don't want to accidentally start announcing slash ten on the public internet. Like so, you also <laughs> it's, it's it's like uh, BGP net uh, the the network administrator should also like have have proper guards in place so they don't use yes. these yep. these internal routes and. Yeah, there, stuff like that. Yeah, cool. Um, the other thing I put it in the chat as well, uh, and as you mentioned, so uh, on services, the spec dot load balancer IP field um, was announced as deprecated as of one dot two four. 
however, there's kind of a hilarious discord on the actual open issue um, because unfortunately, nearly every public cloud provider is using that field at this time. So you know, Azure, yeah. AWS, Google Cloud, uh, so and on and so forth. In Cilium, um, it's it's completely optional. So yeah. um, uh, it's it's not so if you if we um, if we look, for example, now at this at this service, so um, uh, it's not being so. This this field is not being set by by Cilium. So we're we're future proofed in that in that yeah. sense. I know that a uh, lot of uh, I know a lot of cloud cloud providers they they set they actually set this this field the moment they they do this allocation part. Um, yeah. But we we have other ways to work around that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, it does. It just it doesn't look like they can be able to get rid of it anytime soon because unfortunately it is still powering largely the majority of, of people's clusters. You know, like if, if, if yeah, it is. a lot of the cloud providers have go, have not even thought about changing this yet as well. So the the back and forth on the open issue is kind of amusing. They're they're almost having to backtrack a little bit about the deprecation, but um, yeah, but, but it does make sense because it's it's quite limiting in some sense to have sure. only one IP address. So. For for example, if you if you run dual stack, which which again is supported by by this, uh, though I cannot actually demo it because my cluster <laughs> is IPv4. Um, but if you uh, one, one really like in, so so for example, if you one one um, so uh, what it would look like is I I do have to very quickly uh, go take a peek at the actual names again. Um, so, for example, we we have here the IPv4 families and single stack. So, if you if you would have a cluster that actually supports it, um, uh, then you can through the specification. Um, we can um, we can add this uh, these two these two options. Which come on, oh my! <laughs> It added, a lot of, it, added, it, it added a lot of extra space, which, which it's not <laughs> happy about. Yeah. Uh, so um, so the, the options here, I believe, are uh, so we have a single stack, which will also have a, a, a prefer a dual stack, I believe. So then if, if it's available, it will add um, it will add these additional. Uh, it also will allocate an IPv4 address for you, or an IPv6 address for you. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, and that's that's also quite a new new uh, uh, um, uh, within quotations feature. So, and the old old way of doing it wouldn't allow you to to say, yes. oh, I want this specific IP address for IPv4, and I want this specific one for IPv6. But with the annotations, that is possible. So, if you yep. Um, uh, let's say uh, if you have uh, uh, FF um, many um, colons zero many colons zero e um, <laughs> this would be a valid this would be a valid way to to also request an IPv6 uh, a very specific IPv6 address for uh, uh, in this case actually let's try because it's, it should tell us that it's just not it cannot allocate anything for it. Um, because we don't, uh, we don't allow the, the my cluster is just not set up for it, unfortunately. Um, but if I um, if I were to apply this this service, then uh, oh, it's not happy because my current services has a low balancer uh, class set. So again, I need to first delete the one with the low balancer class and then reapply. Um, so it should actually. So so currently, I don't have any pools with both of uh, any of these. Um, but in this case, so it will say like it does recognize that this is an IP address and mm -hmm. and that there's currently just no pool uh, for okay. it. Uh, but we do support IPv6 in in here, and that's why using the annotations is is ideal, ideally, uh, or is better yeah. than than having the the than using the old field. So yeah, I hope that answers the that question. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for. Quickly, <laughs> quickly putting that together. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, Yutaro mentions in Kube proxy replacement, we already have an option to allow accessing cluster IP from outside. It is disabled by default. So I believe what we need to support is announcing that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And again, that's at at uh, we did, I, we did receive the request, and at some future point, we'll we'll add that. Yeah. Don't see any reason why that wouldn't be possible. I mean, it's just an IP range we're announcing, I guess. So, yeah. um, cool. Okay. 
Well, um, I believe that's largely everything that we wanted to talk about today. Um, thank you very much, everybody, for joining and for asking a, a, a number of fantastic questions. Thank you very much, Dylan, for that fantastic demo of BGP, Load Balancer IP, uh, Load Balancer IPAM. Um, yeah, and thank you very much. If there are any questions, please um, feel free to join the, uh, the Cilium uh, community Slack um, or ask, uh, ask us on Twitter and things like that. And thank you very much. Cool. Thank you. Thank you as well, Dan. Bye. All right.